What's up, man? What's going on, little uh, little dumbass? Um, here's your contracts right here. All you have to do is sign right here, run right here, and right here in blood. And what? In blood. Now try to sign it fast because we don't got too yeah. much time or whatever. And if you need me to get someone to you know uh -huh, read it for uh -huh. you, just let right. me know because most right. of your kind can't read. No, 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 I'm going a, I'm to a read. It's just telling you about the brands you can and cannot wear and who to hang out with and not to hang out Wait, with. Wait, what do it mean? Who's our uh, ops and they oh, own me. Oh, that part? Oh, that's talking about we own your image and likeness. We get 80% of the air you breathe and every right word here. you speak. I was dibbling, dabbling on the internet. This isn't to cause any uproar or anything. I just wanted to be educated on the subject that I was talking about. Now... I ran into this article. I'm going to read it. That's about it. I'm not going to infer anything. I'm not going to, you know, that's about it. Motown Records was black owned and never put out any songs that was harmful or degrading to blacks. The black people that owned Motown Records, they loved and cared about blacks and they never did any harm, anything to harm blacks. Motown was never used as a vehicle to exploit and show negative images of black people. Motown created more superstars than any other record company even to this very day. Everything was clean on Motown. You can't find a song on Motown records that was disrespectful or degrading to black people. But for the past 30 years, record companies have put out songs that trash and degraded black people in every kind of way. So let's take a look. These are the men that ruined, that run the major record companies. These are the men that allow people to make songs about. They are the men that allow people to make songs calling black people in words. These men use the record companies to sell and promote songs that degrade blacks. They would never allow anybody to make songs called. All the major record companies are headed by every person that is making songs that degrading black people are signed to these guys record companies. They know that these songs are harmful to blacks. And they still promote it. A person can't just record and release any song that they want. The executives and the people that's high up and up that run the record companies, they bring in the artists that they listen to to record a whole rec the whole record. And then they say yes or no to release that record to the public. They know that these songs are degrading and harmful to the community. Every record company in America could easily say no. We refuse to release these songs. Easily say no. We can. Re we refuse to release these songs. We don't want our name being a part of anything like this. Harmful to another race that's not our own. But they don't do it. These are the people that run major record companies. And then it has a list. And the list goes on. And the list goes on and on and on. Now, you see, black music back in the day was like a their world star hip hop. It was like the world's world star hip hop through lyrical form. They liked hearing negativity. They liked hearing about violence. They liked everybody gravitated towards that because it wasn't no cell phones back in the day. So they created the image with their minds when they listened to the lyrics. So that's why a lot of negative music got real popular. However, they saw that and monopolized off of it. The people at the top said, yeah, yo, you know what? We getting money off of signing the people who's actually when they start kicking that message like that. And not only that, 
Our people doing good. They people, I mean, they look where they live. Like, look at, look how they live. I mean, they still saw us as slaves. Like, like Kanye was said, we're the new slave. They still saw us that that as that and treated us like that. Buck breaking didn't start with Kanye West. It started when hip hop started to gravitate more negative, and they was like, you know what? Let's start to tweak it and push that. And then once they started to push that, everybody else just fell in line. Oh, that's what's starting to make it. Well, I can make a song like that too. And thus the destruction of hip hop. Now you could go to YouTube yourself and scroll down on the times where they done protested gangster rap or whatever. When N.W.A. came out and when all the aggressive and the, the rap started to come out where even where the white people or the so-called people at the top was looking at this and was like, yo, maybe we could bang off of this and things started to go left. Sitting in Baptist Church in Harlem to say enough is enough. It is not all right for our black male children to grow up and be drug dealers, gang bashers, or stick up kids. But your negative lyrics and videos are telling them that it's all right. Many of those who came to protest were primarily middle class adults, educated working people and parents who were insulted by the negative stereotypes of blacks portrayed in the rap lyrics. But negative rap is a slap in our faces. But negative rap is a slap in our faces. But negative rap is a slap in our faces. A slap in our faces. See, we tried to stand up for, you know, the youth, you know, back in the day where they was the children of our future and all that. But guess what? Y'all niggas wanted to do, y'all wanted to, oh, no, we like Tupac. I mean, not Tupac. We like Snoop Dogg. But we don't want to expose all that back in the day. Bitches ain't shit, but hoes and trash. Now we all sitting up here. Now all we see each other is bitches and, and, and hoes and tricks. And, and we don't see each other with respect. Guess who helped? Guess who helped? Nick, it was a double, the, it was two, it wasn't just these people or the executives or the people who ran the labels. It was everybody. It was people who agreed with doing this message and said the black people, whatever race, it was the people who said, you know what? I, I'm trying to get money. This is what get money. We never seen this type of money in our life and blah, blah, blah. We changed our family. We could do something positive with the money, even though we kicking a negative message. It is what it is. But black people started to fall in line with it. Then the, the executives and other labels and stuff, they started to create, uh, uh, create labels off of it as well and started to come up off of it. Four, you even go into the whole... Oh, but they be exposing what they what really happened in the industry by them being forced to come up with that music. They weren't forced. You know, they, they weren't forced. I'm sorry to tell you this, but sometimes we need to fight back as people and we could have. You know, I know the rich, I know selling out your selling your soul or selling out your people or whatever was more important, but uh no, nah, we need to fight back. And sometimes the times that we should have fought back, like slavery, no nobody wanna say, uh nah, everybody we don't want to take the L. Hold the L. We should have fought back as a people. We should have kept coming up with positive music. We should have known something was up. We should have told people what was up. Should have told the story a long time ago or whatever. So yes, there was a secret meeting. This is a little story from Crazy Bone where he was exposing where the few, they, they at the top wanted the future of hip hop go and us as the slaves was going to definitely make that happen because apparently it already happened and it happened and that's how it happened and then it happened. Popcorn, you get your pistol, no, sir. We don't know. <laughs> Quickly after this meeting began, one of the industry colleagues, who shall remain nameless like everybody else, thanked us for attending. He then gave the floor to a man who only introduced himself by first name and gave no other details about his personal background. Mm. I think he was the owner of the residence, but that was never confirmed. He briefly praised all of us for the success we had achieved in our industries and congratulated us for being selected as, a part, as part of this small group of decision makers. At this point, I began to feel slightly uncomfortable in the strangeness of this gathering. The subject quickly changed as the speaker went on to tell us that the respective companies we represented had invested in a very profitable industry which could become even more rewarding with our active involvement. Damn. He explained that 
the companies we work for had invested millions into millions into the building of privately owned prisons and that our positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability of these investments. Then he says, I remember many of us in the group immediately looking at each other in awe and confusion. At the same time, I didn't know what a private prison was, but I wasn't the only one. Sure enough. We're going to stop it there. Basically, private prisons invested into this destruction of hip hop and our people. People at the top said, hey, we can use this because we clearly see through the statistics that it's working. You guys are dying. Our race is still living. We still cool. Everybody else is still cool. But your race definitely is destroying itself with this music. Why don't y'all keep promoting it? Why don't y'all keep it going? Why don't we help y'all and actually pay you guys to promote this? To send out this message, to destroy your people, make your girl, woman hoes, make your the, the dudes rap about drug dealing, rap about killing, and make it sound cool. Matter of fact, give it a little swag, put a little possess on it. Matter of fact, make the world love it, put a dance behind it, make it embedded into our minds and mental. Make every rapper think they have to rap like this, nigga. And then it happened. And then the audience started, y'all like it, y'all listened to it, y'all supported it. Now, back in the day, we called, we, we, we was, they was called, it was like radical music or whatever. And certain, not all people was for rap music. Some of them protested this damn music. Ask Eminem. Even Eminem had protest against that damn music and the message that they were saying. But apparently, we as an audience and the people had something to do with it because we as a people bought it. I, well, I did too. I bought Eminem. Album. I bought Dr. Dre's type of albums. I bought all types of DMX albums. I bought rap albums. You feel what I'm saying? Even though I listened to modern rock music back in the day. I'm old. Don't worry about me. But I bought rap music. You did probably one day in your life or maybe you know what I mean maybe with a drink song or something but it don't matter everybody had a play in this degrade degradation of degradation whatever you want to call it of black people and black culture see what happens is yeah we bring the swag and the colorful clothes and no, no I mean knowing what to wear and you know how did the certain lingo and all that stuff and we also was kicking positive messages but y'all stop listening to the shit Y'all stop buying the stuff. Y'all stop. All the, and then the and then this is where the record labels and people had something to do with it, where they stopped promoting it and they said no more conscious music because conscious music was starting to create people who rebel and was starting to create too many smart people, people who think. So they started to kick them out and push the negative too. Next thing you know, the Lil Wayne's and the and the you know Tupac on this, this more negative side was starting to be promoted more than I know that people know hit them up more than they know their mom or you know the other joints. So it's like. People, the the it's a it's a cluster of a the the destruction of black culture. We helped destroy it, and they did too. We can't sit here and be like, oh, the, it was just them and the executives. And no, no, we're human. We had a, we was able to think right from wrong and know right from wrong and know what the what was right from wrong to tell our people to push our people. And as a people, we didn't. We got P Diddy. He got a record label. Why didn't he push more of this music? We got um uh, Dr. Dre. Why didn't he put but push this music? We had Suge Knight back in the day. Why didn't he push more? No, we had murder. Ink and trying to everybody was trying to seem like they was the more evil than the other entity and it all now look at us now look at us now everybody dying even us we starting to realize that the rappers really do got the influence that we thought that influence got people doing drugs and doing all types of nonsense and it's destroying a people and now even they people got messed up by it because now they people like it too Everybody like rap music now this worldwide and now that 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 mindset of yeah prove that I'm the baddest and I'm the most killer really you know what I mean back in the day them little freestyles and the cool stuff we used to do in the hood now they take literal and now they gotta be the, the baddest in real life not realizing that we that was lyrical to make us seem big because we seem so small to the world put it this way it was a joined effort in the destruction of black culture and our music and our people and hip hop and in everything. And then we all affected by it. We can play the blame game all we want, but it's 2022. We got black executives now. We got black people who's who can do better and they don't promote it.
We know better till this day. Right now, you could call P. Diddy and be like, no more negative music about our people, Mr. Love. Boom. Or we ain't listening to it. Next thing you know, oh, wait. Don't you support Coke Boys? You, you feel what I'm saying? And we all love this music. I, Mac and Cheese 3, that's my favorite. We all love it. But however, it ain't doing nothing good for our people. And now we all kind of like, damn, it's too late. Or is it? We got to start putting in the music or music is like medicine. We got to start putting good messages in the music and start to feed that to our people. And that can be a start of giving us an antidote to this madness. Anyway, I'm your boy at Philly SIJ. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the like button. I'm Audi like a belly button. Thanks for watching, too. Y'all do be supporting the brother. I respect that. Give me some. Y'all be supporting the brother. Y'all be on me liking the stuff on Instagram. Follow my Instagram. Like, and I've just learned how to use Twitter, thank God. But yeah, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to build a better conversation on this channel and make it. And I mean, you see that the last videos I've been dropping been more serious and been more about black culture and been really who to blame and really what's going on. On and really how we really should how i think about situations and how y'all could adapt and be like you know what maybe he's right maybe he got a point or maybe you know what maybe i just see it another way but anyway peace